For this software service to be robustly and seamlessly integrated as a platform, there's really no company that can replace all these elements. In my opinion, only Tesla can achieve this. But Tesla... Welcome to Anders Engineering Error. This week's CES is happening. Among them, NVIDIA's keynote speech has garnered a lot of attention. During a presentation that lasted over two hours, NVIDIA delved into a vast array of topics. Many of these had already been covered at last year's GTC or events like Computex. Yet this time, they meticulously outlined their comprehensive plans. So, what do you aim to accomplish with AI? They explained everything in detail, saying they were fully prepared. Currently, there's a lot of interest in AI GPUs and data centers. NVIDIA has already transformed into a platform company. They also have a strong software stack, showing their growth as a platform and service company. Over time, they are becoming competitors with Tesla. In the past, it was Microsoft versus Apple in the PC era and Google versus Apple in the mobile era. Are we now entering the era of Nvidia and Tesla in the cloud age? This is all based on the assumption that everything goes as planned. Instead of just skimming through the technology, which might not leave a lasting impression, I believe it's more effective to first highlight the key messages and their underlying significance. Then, we can explore the technologies involved, their unique attributes, and their potential influence. Let's dive in. This time, CEO Jensen Huang's leather jacket has a new style. It now has a shiny crocodile-like texture. One of the most talked about moments from the CES keynote is the Captain America shield. People are capturing the moment it makes a thud sound and sharing it widely. Actually, I'll explain this later. They introduced the NVL72 supercomputer platform. What stood out to me was their comprehensive approach to AI development, where they meticulously defined various layers and ensured thorough preparation for each one. This year, we are hearing a lot about the age of agent AI. Moreover, when we look at robotics, including self-driving cars, humanoid robots, and industrial robots, it truly marks the dawn of physical AI. I found it impressive that AI is being integrated into our real world. It's not just about data collection or image generation. AI is expanding into the real world. Think about logistics like Kupang or manufacturing sites, battery production or semiconductor fabrication. This opens a huge market, estimated at 50 trillion. Let's break down NVIDIA's plans in each area. First, the most impressive thing was the introduction of Cosmos. This foundation model aims to advance physical AI. What does this mean? It aims to replicate the real world in 3D exactly as it is. They aim to build an environment for creating and testing more than reality allows. The existing Omniverse, a type of 3D world, can now be brought to life in a hyper-realistic way by incorporating AI. This concept, termed Cosmos, signifies the universe and encompasses everything. It can create settings for autonomous driving and simulate how humanoid robots understand objects. But what's even more fascinating is, what do you think is essential to build this physical AI? Real-world data is important, and so is virtually produced data. By creating synthetic data and testing scenarios that do not occur in reality, we can achieve higher sophistication. Where will everything be operated? It all comes down to the GPU. Recently, Broadcom has been rising because it announced custom AI chips for big tech companies. NVIDIA also has custom AI chips and plans to create a business unit for ASICs. But ultimately, their strength lies in GPUs. Originally, GPUs are graphic processing units designed for high-level graphics. NVIDIA's greatest strength is its hardware's overwhelming performance. To properly realize this hyper-realistic reality, NVIDIA has presented this world model platform based on their best hardware to construct the Cosmos World Foundation model. This serves as the basis for implementing physical AI. This is truly a tremendous step forward. Omniverse has been around, but a few years ago, people weren't interested. Back then, my GTC videos didn't get many views. But now, GTC is super popular, right? When I showed the Omniverse, some said it wouldn't work in a factory. But now, things have changed. The technology has advanced, and it works. NVIDIA renders in 3D on Omniverse and outputs it to Cosmos. This creates hyper-realistic synthetic data, like real photos. For example, in autonomous driving, they combine data from sensors like LiDAR, radar, and cameras. Alternatively, you can engage with Jensen and simulate a wide array of real-world scenarios, much like how Dr. Strange navigates through different realities. This feature allows for the accurate simulation of various situations without needing to experience them directly. AI can understand physical situations and generate new content from that. But this only works if real-world data is available. Don't be mistaken, these need real-world data. Without it, they won't work. But Jensen has prepared well. I'll explain more soon. As you can see, Cosmos includes four different models. The autoregressive model is designed to handle and generate data in real time, making it possible to simulate and manage physical scenarios instantly. It's designed to create high quality images or videos. The video tokenizer, on the other hand, focuses on accurately analyzing data from the physical world and generating suitable tokens based on that analysis. Essentially, it means embedding physical or dynamic attributes into the tokens. Lastly, the video processing curation pipeline is intended to, a massive amount of physical data will be generated. How can we process it efficiently using CUDA or AI? techniques. 
When did NVIDIA get all this ready? They've been preparing since the Omniverse days. And what kind of company was NVIDIA originally? A gaming company. Isn't the RTX 50 series they announced this time amazing? A new gaming graphics card has been released. This card features DLSS4, an improvement from DLSS2 which first integrated AI. In simple terms, when you play a game, the GPU constantly processes and renders graphics in real time. The GPU has to generate those scenes 200 or 300 times. DLSS or deep learning super sampling can increase the number from 60 to 200 or 300. How does it do that? AI creates two or three extra frames between existing ones. This makes the graphics much smoother. AI has been trained extensively to replicate this rendering method. Even if the CUDA cores in the GPU aren't heavily used, the DLSS feature can still generate extra frames during rendering. It can also upscale the resolution from full HD to 4K. Nvidia has been researching these technologies from the start. In gaming, these innovations are used in the tensor cores of the RTX 20, 30 and 40 series graphics cards. We often call it NP. I've discussed this in past videos, so check those out. The key is that we've created foundation models for real-time world simulation. Lately, there's been talk about AI's progress being limited by a lack of data, as mentioned by Ilya Sutskeva. But it's not just him. A lot of people are talking about it, but Jensen Huang has clearly stated, no, I don't think so. We don't lack data. We can just synthesize it. Real-world data needs security, but we can still create many cases through synthesis. From Jensen's perspective, he might not consider the data relationship in terms of text. What NVIDIA truly desires is physical AI. Since this involves video in the real world, they seem to believe that a vast amount can still be generated through synthesis. However, to keep progressing, real-world data is essential. By launching Cosmos as an open ecosystem, system for robotics and autonomous vehicle companies, these companies will likely use it and contribute new, authentic real-world data. This part gave me chills. We create synthetic data well, but it is also available as real-world open data. Seeing this, I think Jensen Huang is truly brilliant. Six months ago, I mentioned that companies like Apple and Google have an edge because they can leverage user data for training. This makes them powerful platforms. Now, NVIDIA has ingeniously solved this problem through this collaboration because NVIDIA's GPUs are essential for enabling autonomous driving and robotics. Although Tesla designs its own systems, even Tesla purchases various GPUs from NVIDIA to achieve this. Looking at these things, companies with a long-term vision can develop such strategies when they are making a lot of money. This is the kind of decision and strategy that forward-thinking CEOs make. Ultimately, generating and training synthetic data, like autonomous driving data or data transitioning from Omniverse to Cosmos, is based on 20 million hours of real-world data. 20 million hours is hard to grasp. It seems like an incredibly vast amount of time, but Tesla is already gathering a huge amount of video data globally. This effort focuses on understanding natural phenomena, human behaviors, and various movements. They are training and developing multiple models through this approach. Therefore, it ultimately allows for the creation of a fully functional 3D environment called Cosmos. This system enables the continuous collection of driving data from real-world scenarios and also tackles unique outlier situations in virtual data, such as Six Sigma, Tail, and Long Tail cases. Additionally, the Neural Reconstruction Engine was introduced. They discussed the Neural Network Reconstruction Engine. Using sensor data from self-driving cars, they create a high-quality 4D simulation. This concept of 4D essentially refers to past data that has been rendered in 3D, and using these sensor logs, this AI data factory can generate hundreds of driving data instances. NVIDIA's Jensen Huang is confident that synthetic data can generate high-quality results. He highlighted their significant partnerships, notably with Toyota, to push forward in autonomous driving. Given Toyota's status as the top car seller, this collaboration aims to secure real-world data, thereby boosting Toyota's current technological capabilities. Actually, Jensen Huang also mentioned Waymo and Tesla. He announced the start of the autonomous driving era. The market is growing rapidly, and we are joining in. When considering the role NVIDIA can play in autonomous driving, the first aspect is the AI training system. This system gathers data from live radar, radar, and video to autonomously make decisions. It builds on existing H100 and the recently announced Blackwell for training. Next, the simulation system is evolving from Omniverse to Cosmos. This allows various simulation tests like the ones shown earlier. Finally, regarding vehicle processors, China's autonomous driving tech is getting a lot of attention. Most processors used there are NVIDIA's Orin processors. At this CES, NVIDIA announced the Thor processor, which follows the Orin processor. The performance was already impressive, but now they've released Thor. It has 20 times the processing power of the Orin processor. That's it. But this technology isn't just for cars. It also goes into humanoids. Both cars and humanoids have many sensors like cameras and LiDAR. These sensors can all be processed using transformers. So, from a hardware perspective, can you feel the difference? NVIDIA GPUs for data center servers are really hot now, right? Big tech firms are buying these processors for vehicles and humanoid robots. Now they are also used in gaming with the new RTX 50 series. Built on the black platform, the RTX 50 series is surprisingly affordable. Although the exchange rate has increased, making it more expensive here, the lineup ranges from 60 to 90 when compared to the 40 series. The top 
1040 series model was $1,599, about 2 to 2.5 million won. But the better RTX 5070 is just $549. That's quite affordable, right? We'll cover more about the RTX series in another video. They have built the entire hardware stack, from gaming to mid-tier data centers. From a B2B and B2C perspective, the Cosmos platform supports businesses wanting to explore autonomous driving. It also covers many AI-related needs. Additionally, they announced something quite interesting, similar to a Mac Mini. You know, all those A100H100 models. Priced in the tens of thousands, these are designed for server use. However, many engineers and researchers find it challenging to afford such costs. That's where Digit comes in, a compact home AI supercomputer priced at just 4 to 5 million won. It's quite appealing, right? A home AI supercomputer, a thousand times stronger than a regular laptop. It's sold for $3,000. Everything that works on NVIDIA DGX Cloud works here too. The actual chip inside is the Grace Blackwell 110. Initially, it used the GB200 chip. It has two Blackwell chips and one Grace CPU. Here, we have a CPU from MediaTek, a top Taiwanese system on chip company. They worked hard in Taiwan, connecting the MV Link and the black and gray CPUs. They attached everything, including HDMI, MV Link, and chip to chip. Then, they compactly assembled it and connected DDR5X as high bandwidth unified memory. In fact, according to the engineer, there was some comparison with Apple's M4 chip. Project Digit runs at 512 gigabytes per second and 250 teraflops. We compared using Bluetooth point 16. Based on Protinfo point 16, the M4 Pro Mac Mini has half the bandwidth and less than one tenth the performance. This means we have an alternative since prices are $3,000 and $2,200. The M4 Pro Mac Mini or M4 Max Mac Pro offer higher bandwidth but still lack in performance. From an engineer's perspective, this shows how valuable these items have become. You get the idea, right? From edge devices to servers, Nvidia has developed a wide range of tools that leverage their GPUs for more than just AI inference or training. Imagine the resources needed to run Cosmos. In addition to that, Nvidia provides numerous software platforms, such as Clara for biomedical applications and many others, similar to what Google offers. Meta has evolved into a platform company serving both consumers and businesses. Similarly, Microsoft and AWS have developed cloud platforms for enterprises, allowing startups to build their IT web pages or apps without the need for individual server setups. Just as Nvidia led the mobile and IT eras, it now seems to be preparing a platform for everything involving AI. This includes not only hardware but also software and services, which must be well integrated to establish a platform. When considering if any company can replace all of these aspects, there really isn't one. In my opinion, only Tesla comes close. Nvidia is approaching areas like humanoids and autonomous driving by inviting everyone into the commercial space, assuring that they will handle everything. In contrast, Tesla resembles Apple by designing and preparing a full-stack solution in-house, while Nvidia is more like Google, opening up Cosmos as an open option and requesting real data to manage everything for you. They follow a similar strategy. Jensen Huang believes AI will extend into reasoning based on scaling laws. He expects testing and evaluation to take much longer, enhancing intelligence. For example, using optimization tools like GPT-3 takes a lot of time. It's not just about text, it's also about generating images and integrating various models. Using AI platforms, many AI models can be combined effectively. They interact and provide feedback to each other. This allows automatic information retrieval and AI-generated outputs. Where does all this operate? It operates on NVIDIA GPUs. Each cloud operates independently. So the concept of timescaling ultimately means having various AI models, such as ChatGPT, Google's VO2 for video generation, and others that produce audio and songs. These models will interconnect and generate a higher level of intelligence, which is a very insightful point. It's not just about extended reasoning. Timescaling involves combining multiple AI models and generative AI tools to enhance intelligence. This could lead to traditional IT departments being entirely replaced, much like HR departments, potentially even taking over human roles. Utilizing AI platforms like Nemo and Nema from NVIDIA, it is anticipated that many organizations might achieve a level of intelligence capable of effectively replacing human tasks. Among all the platforms, the most notable one is the robot. NVIDIA calls it Isaac Groot, which is essentially an all-encompassing platform for developing robots. Isaac Groot handles humanoid robots and more. Figures like Zero Two and Digit are involved. You can see them at Boston Dynamics. All are collaborating with NVIDIA. Previously, we showed that teaching robots complex actions requires a lot of data. Tools like Cosmos are used to generate and train with this data. By working with various humanoid robot companies, they aim to better understand through real-world data collection and sharing test results. This encourages many robots and diverse companies to support development, fostering collaboration and testing with NVIDIA. While Tesla has its own projects, NVIDIA offers a platform for creating humanoid robots. NVIDIA isn't making a robot to beat Tesla, but rather the platform itself. For example, with Apple Vision Pro, humans can train robots by mimicking their movements. Robots can generate large-scale training data from their actions, which can integrate with Cosmos. This means they can do much more. It can be used for servers, 
As mentioned, it's tested extensively in Omniverse with Cosmos. The next generation Thor processor is integrated into Edge devices. It's used in various GPUs and serves as a comprehensive software testing platform. They have built a full stack platform. Imagine a startup trying to handle all of this alone. It is impossible. But many companies will use NVIDIA to build something competitive. And what is NVIDIA really good at? Just like with CUDA, using the CUDA library is optimized for NVIDIA GPUs to deliver the best performance. The same applies here. Using NVIDIA GPUs will yield excellent results. This leads to greater interaction among engineers and fosters open development. In an interview with Bloomberg, Jensen Huang mentioned that he sees Tesla as their most powerful competitor. Jensen Huang actually said this. Tesla's advantage lies in their automotive AI factory, a resource NVIDIA lacks. This is why they choose to collaborate, leveraging numerous NVIDIA devices. Tesla's autonomous driving algorithm is among the best globally, and the real-time data they collect worldwide is incredibly valuable. This extends beyond autonomous driving to include humanoid robots. They are seen as the most powerful and important tech force today. This shows Tesla faces significant competition. Meanwhile, NVIDIA points out that AI is still in its early stages, but they expect huge growth. It was a truly astonishing announcement. We discussed NVIDIA's blueprint while covering the overall outline. We do not know if this will become a reality, but many engineers are being well paid to follow this huge roadmap. The favorable treatment of engineers and the clear vision presented by the CEO seem to be contributing to their growth. As NVIDIA continues to grow, it will be interesting to closely monitor the actions of both their competitors and collaborators. If there are details that we haven't covered, please leave comments. While I may not be able to read all of them, I will try to address popular topics in future videos. This has been Anders Engineering Error.